Program Director, Ms. Zengeziwe Msima. It's an honor for me to deliver the Mum Charlotte Manyama Gregor Lecture, my hero, trailblazer, who opened doors for us women. Before I start, I would like to recognize Mr. Tula Sizwe Makanya, the chairperson of the Institute, Ms. Ayanda Siboni, mm -hmm. Professor Msawengo Sisarombe, Dr. Atambile Masola, trustees and all the funders of the Charlotte Makake uh, Foundation. Honored guests, including those that are joining virtually, Sani Bonani, Molweni Dumelang. Education and the Africa we want is a big and important topic. It's important because education has the power to inform and empower. And yet in the wrong hands, it has the power to strip a people of their dignity and entrench the colonizer's perspective of who an African is. Primitive, corrupt, the list is long. This is the lie that we were fed growing up. Sadly, we haven't done much to tell and teach the true African story of who we are, because as leaders, we have subconsciously bought into this lie and started living it. Chima Mandangozi Adichi talks about the problem of a single story, which when told repeatedly becomes the only story and the only truth. We look down upon anything African. We hate ourselves. In spite of the trauma that we went through being dispossessed of land, our human identity and our citizenship, we have not seen the need for us to pause and invest in our healing, invest in discovering and telling the true African story that predates colonialism in our homes, at schools, and at churches. We are wounded humans. We can't love ourselves and the people that we lead without knowing and embracing who we are and our ways of being. The dominant story on any media platform talks about everything that is going wrong. And indeed, a lot is going wrong. The question then is how then can we raise a self-loving, confident African child who believes they can conquer the world in the midst of such negativity? What is the role of family, schools, government, churches, and society in educating our children for the Africa that we want? An Africa that embraces its identity and its history, its languages and its culture, and develops everything else rooted in that foundation. On African Day, I had the honor to address high school students about the Africa of our forebears, an Africa that gave birth to civilization and the first humans in the world, a place that boasts the first writings, whose writings predate Latin. I told them about Dr. Quentin Atkinson's research findings from more than 500 languages, the compelling evidence that these languages can be traced back to a long forgotten dialect spoken by our own stage, uh, stage, stage age uh, ancestors. They did not know about Africa's contribution to maths and the calendar. The Libobo and Ishango bones were foreign concepts to them. I told them about the world's first artwork, which was found in Blombo's cave in South Africa. As a trained medical doctor, I was meant to believe that the father of medicine is Hippocrates, and indeed, I took an oath, a Hippocratic oath in that belief. However, it is a known fact that the actual father of medicine is Imhotep, an African who lived from 2655 to 2600 BC. The list of misnomers and distorted history is long. Our greatness as a people is buried in the lies and subjugation. The question is, what are we doing about it? Why are we not teaching our true history? There is an African proverb that says, until the lion tells the story, the hunter will always be the hero. It is Bantu Bangabiko who warned us that the most potent weapon <coughs> excuse me, in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. 
My submission to you today is that we need to free our minds from the poison that we've been fed and learn it in order to change our thinking tra trajectory and how we perceive ourselves and how we lead. Be deliberate about healing our minds and souls. Develop our languages, indigenous languages, to academic languages. Invest in art that heals, that tells our beautiful stories in our voices and in our languages. Our curriculum should build from our indigenous knowledge, which should be given its rightful place in our psyche first. The education system should be anchored in a human rights framework where schools adapt to meet the academic, social, and emo emotional needs of every student, where students, parents, and teachers all participate in decisions affecting education, co-creating an education of the Africa that we want, where all students are treated with their dignity and attend school free from discrimination of any kind, and where communities play an important role in monitoring education policies and practices to continuously improve educational outcomes for students and stay relevant for the times we educate for. We need an education system that is relevant to the changing social, cultural, environmental, and economic context of different young people and involves youth as active and effective participants in the educational process. Education should give every child and every person an opportunity to reach their full potential. It should prepare young people to lead ethical and responsible lives, which include participating actively in society, creating solutions for our challenges, managing conflict responsibly, and embracing diversity. Parents and teachers teach our youth to respect themselves by treating them with respect and dignity. We build their confidence by having high expectations of them. We teach them moral values by leading a moral life. As Mama Charlotte Manyama Kake taught us, we need to do away with fearful jealousy. We need to kill that spirit of self and love one another as brothers and sisters. We would not live above our people. We should not live above our people, but live with them. And if we can rise as we should, bring them with us. She taught us that this work is not for ourselves, but the generations that follow. As I conclude, I would like to remind us that we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. Mama Matlaka opened the path for us to invest in a better world before we pass it to the rightful owners, our children and their children. When we do that, we'll be able to build the Africa we want for us and those that follow. I thank you.